بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم جمیل صدیقی از ہیئر دا کرنٹ ٹاپک از ہیموگلوبینوپیتیز اینڈ سکل سیل انیمیا لرننگ آؤٹ کمس آر ڈیفائن ہیموگلوبینوپیتیز اینڈ لسٹ سم کامن ٹائپس understand organization of globin gene families no sickle cell disease or sickle cell anemia its clinical manifestations diagnosis and treatment and briefly characterize some types of hemoglobinopathies hemoglobinopathies are the family of genetic disorders affecting the structure function and or production of hemoglobin broadly classified into qualitative hemoglobinopathies and quantitative hemoglobinopathy in qualitative hemoglobinopathies there is a mutation of a structural gene resulting the production of structurally abnormal hemoglobin molecule for example sickle cell disease or hemoglobin s disease in qualitative hemoglobinopathies there is a mutation of regulator gene where the structure of globin chain is normal but the quantity is insufficient examples are thalassemias alpha chain thalassemias and beta chain thalassemias sickle cell disease hemoglobin c disease hemoglobin sc disease are common examples of qualitative hemoglobinopathies which result due to altered amino acid sequence in the globin chains of the hemoglobin the altered amino acid sequence could be substitution deletion or elongation either one amino acid is substituted by another amino acid or it is entirely deleted or some extra amino acid are incorporated in the globin chains or chain is elongated the thalassemias alpha and beta beta thalassemia major and beta thalassemia minor they are the common examples of quantitative hemoglobinopathy where decreased production of normal hemoglobin is there as a result of abnormal alpha beta chain ratio Here is the organization of the globin gene families which would give you a better understanding of hemoglobinopathies. The chromosome number 16 carries alpha globin-like genes while autosomal chromosome number 11 contains the beta globin-like genes. alpha globin like genes are 3 alpha 1 alpha 2 and zeta either of alpha 1 or alpha 2 can produce alpha chain while zeta produces zeta chain genomically there is another pair of chromosome number 16 so all together 6 alpha globin like genes are there beta globin like genes on chromosome number 11 they are 5 beta delta 2 gamma gamma g and gamma a and eta similarly the other pair of chromosome number 
11 also contain these five genes. So genomically, there are four alpha genes, two zeta, two beta, two delta, four gamma, and two eta in the human genome. And how they produce, they transcribe and translate it to produce the different alpha globin like chains or beta globin like chains to form different types of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin gover one is embryonic hemoglobin composed of two zeta and two eta chains. No alpha, no beta chains are here in embryonic hemoglobin. In fetal hemoglobin, two alpha chains and two gamma chains there is no beta chain hemoglobin a2 is a minor adult hemoglobin having two alpha two delta chains still the beta chains are not there so in these embryonic fetal and hemoglobin a2 which is a minor adult hemoglobin beta chains are not there normal adult hemoglobin which is more than 95 percent is having beta chains. The tetrameric globin is composed of two alpha and two beta chains. Sickle cell anemia or hemoglobin S disease. It is the most common inherited blood disorder and it is caused by a single nucleotide substitution of DNA in the gene for beta globin occurs primarily in African-American population of USA and it is found in the homozygous recessive individuals. It occurs due to inheritance of two mutated genes, one from each parent. At low oxygen tension, hemoglobin S is deoxygenated and deoxyhemoglobin S polymerizes inside the RPCs forming network of fibrous polymers. These fibrous polymers of the hemoglobin stiffen and distort the shape of RPCs called sickle cells. It is sort of a crescent shaped RPC or sickle shaped RPC which is stiffened in its shape. Normally, the biconcave RBCs, they can pass into the smaller capillaries by compressing themselves. But these rigid erythrocytes, sickle in shape, they cannot compress and cannot pass the minor minute capillaries resulting in the blockage of those capillaries producing anoxia and micro infarcts. These micro infarcts result in severe pain. General effects produced in hemoglobin S disease are abnormalities in red blood cell morphology. That is, they become sickled in shape. And there are definite clinical manifestations like hemolytic anemia and associated hyperbilirubinemia or jaundice. If the genetic defect, defect is heterozygous, there is sickle cell treat in which 20 to 40% hemoglobin S are found. And if the genetic defect is homozygous, there could be 80 to 100% hemoglobin S in those individuals. If we see the genotyping and phenotyping, if both the parents, they are normal, the offspring or the individual is normal. If one parent is normal and other parent is sickle child, the person could be normal 
but the he is suffering from sickle cell trait when both the parents they inherit the defective genes there is a full blown disease called sickle cell anemia with all the clinical manifestations in sickle cell disease or sickle cell anemia the hemoglobin s contains two normal alpha chains and two normal or mutant beta globin chains the genetic code in the gene dna is gtg for the amino acid glutamate the hemoglobin molecules have the globin chains alpha and beta chains which have a definite primary structures where the number of amino acid and their sequence is specific when one nucleotide in the dna one code gtg for glutamate only there is a substitution of t with a this single substitution of a single nucleotide in the genetic code for the glutamic acid is converted from gtg to gag the result is in the primary structure of beta globin chain the amino acid glutamic acid which is on the sixth position so far as sequence is concerned is replaced by valine glutamic acid is neg negatively charged while valine is neutral and this replacement in beta mutant chains results in the hydrophobic pockets which are sticky and they form the polymers they polymerize and form the fibrous hemoglobin which stiffens and gives the rigidity to the red blood cell the beta chains here showing the replacement and here it is showing the beta 6 valine that means beta at position number 6 of the primary structure of beta chain is replaced glutamate is replaced by valine so it is b6 valine the mutation is in the code of glutamic acid and only a single nucleotide t is replaced by a the normal code is gtg while mutant code is gag sickle cell disease is a life threatening and painful disease it is characterized by episodes of pain called crisis throughout the life associated with chronic hemolytic anemia and jaundice life span of rbc is 20 days instead of normal 120 days patient become weak dizzy short breath with increased pulse rate the hemoglobin content decreases about at the level of half of the normal hemoglobin level in adults that affected infant does not begin showing symptoms of the disease until sufficient hemoglobin f has been replaced by adult hemoglobin a which is mutated and becomes the hemoglobin s due to mutation in the beta chain as you know the hemoglobin f after birth decreases from and reaches to minimum level at the age of 6 months and onwards and replaced by hemoglobin a that is adult major adult hemoglobin when it is mutated becomes hemoglobin s the symptoms develop but when sufficient quantity of the hemoglobin f decrease and replaced by sufficient quantity of hemoglobin s then the symptoms appear the other sign and symptoms include increase infection rates which require 
increase in frequent use of antibiotic. There is a chest pain syndrome, strokes, splenic and renal dysfunction because of development of the microinfarcts and bone there is bone marrow hyperplasia due to increase erythropoiesis to compensate for the anemia factors that increase sickly are decrease oxygen tension especially in high altitudes increase partial pressure of carbon dioxide and decrease pH during exercise, dehydration, and increase concentration of 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate in RPC. 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate is an intermediate of glycolytic, glycolytic pathway, an important regulator of the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin. The glycolytic pathway is the main pathway of RBCs, metabolic pathway of RBCs to get the energy. You will be knowing the significance of 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate in other lectures, especially lectures when on metabolism. Treatment, hydrogen by the flu uh, hydration by the fluids, use of painkillers, analgesics, aggressive use of antibiotics could be prophylactic also in prevention of repeated infections and repeated chances of infections. Intermittent transfusion with packed red cells to avoid fluid imbalances. The drug is hydroxyurea which is used it is an anti-tumor drug which promotes hemoglobin F. So less RB is sickly because hemoglobin F doesn't have the beta chains. So the there is less hemoglobin S having beta chains, mutant beta chains, which may minimize the symptoms. Stem cell transplantation is beneficial if carried out. Gene therapy can also be useful. If permitted. Sickle cell treat. Heterozygotes who have one sickle cell gene. The parents, one parent is normal and the other parent having the sickle cell gene. So the offspring, they become the genotypically they are heterozygotes and they have one sickle cell gene. They are having the sickle cell trait instead of sickle, full blown sickle cell disease. These patients do not show clinical manifestations and they can pass a normal life. Heterozygotes for sickle cell gene are less susceptible to Feltiparum malaria. It is actually because of the shorter lifespan of the RBCs. So the malaria parasite, especially very um, lethal or deadly felty malaria cannot complete their cycles. So they are selectively prevented from this type of malaria and it could be treated as a select, considered as a selective advantage of the heterozygous state. They have normal lives. They do not require any treatment and symptoms and signs are very minimum. Hemoglobin C disease. Like hemoglobin S, hemoglobin is also a hemoglobin variant having mutation in the beta genes. At the molecular level, the amino acid lysine is substituted for glutamic acid at position number six of beta globin chain. In sickle cell disease, there is a substitution of valine, and here is the substitution of lysine for the glutamic acid at position number six. And this 
produces the hemoglobin C. When valine is substituted, there is the production of hemoglobin S. When lysine is substituted for the glutamate, the production is of hemoglobin C. Patients homozygous for hemoglobin C. That means the offspring is having both the genes, defective genes for the beta chains and producing hemoglobin C. They show relatively mild chronic and hemolytic anemia. The hemozygous having both the mutant genes received each from the both the parents. They develop mild chronic hemolytic anemia. Symptoms are less and no treatment is required. Hemoglobin SC disease, also known as red cell sickling disease. In this hemoglobinopathy, some beta globin chains have sickle cell mutation while other beta globin chains carry mutation found in hemoglobin C. So they are doubly heterozygous having compound hetero they are compound heterozygotes. Anemia is less severe than sickle cell disease and painful crises are less frequent. The outcome of this disease is better than sickle cell disease or hemoglobin S disease but poor than hemoglobin C disease. Met hemoglobinemias. It is the type of hemoglobinopathy where iron of heme is in oxidized form that is ferric which cannot bind with the oxygen. The oxidation of iron may be caused by drugs such as nitrates or reactive oxygen intermediates. These reactive oxygen species or intermediates are produced as an intermediate in the metabolic pathways of the body. So they are endogenous. Certain mutations in alpha or beta chain can be found producing hemoglobin F. There could be deficiency of enzyme which keeps the iron in the reduced form that is ferrous. The enzyme is NADH cytochrome reductase or we can say the other name is NADH met hemoglobin reductase. So for signs and symptoms are concerned, newborns are particularly susceptible to the effects of met hemoglobin producing compounds. Patients are characterized by cyanose, chocolate cyanosis, brownish blue coloration of skin and mucous membrane, and chocolate colored blood due to the dark colored methemoglobin. Other symptoms include anxiety, headache, dyspnea, and in rare cases, coma and death, depending upon degree of tissue hypoxia. Treatment is with oxygen therapy and vitamin C. If symptoms do not improve then methyl blue or methylene blue drug is given which reduces ferric ions to ferrous so that ferrous can bind with the oxygen and oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin is improved to some extent. Other common hemoglobinopathies which have severe consequences, clinical consequences are thalassemias, especially beta thalassemia major. But we will go for a brief account of thalassemias as these hemoglobinopathies would be 
taught to you in clinical classes where you can understand them in depth and detail. Thalassemia, in thalassemia there is an imbalance in the synthesis of globin chains, partial or total absence of one or more alpha or beta chains of hemoglobin. They are the most common single gene disorders in humans. The structure of hemoglobin is normal but quantity is less. Normally, adult hemoglobin contains alpha 2 and 2 beta chains and the ratio is equal. But here the ratio is disturbed. If defect is in alpha thalassemia, alpha globin chain, the conditions are called alpha thalassemia and beta chains are affected than the beta thalassemias. A thalassemia can be caused by a variety of mutations, including entire gene is deleted or it is substituted or there could be deletions of one to many nucleotide sequence in the DNA. Each thalassemia can be classified as alpha zero, no alpha chains, beta zero, thalassemia where no beta chains are produced or if some chains are produced it, they could be called as alpha plus or beta plus thalassemias. Beta thalassemias caused by point mutations of one or more nucleotides in the DNA sequence. In these disorders synthesis of beta globin chain is decreased or absent typically as a result of point mutations as already told that affect the production of functional messenger RNA. When the functional messenger RNA is not there the entire synthesis of beta globin could be absent. Alpha globin synthesis is normal so they can form alpha tetramers which are unstable and precipitate. So as compensation there is increased synthesis of hemoglobin F and hemoglobin A2. Here is the organization of beta genes and tetramers of hemoglobin found in thalassemias. The autosomal chromosome 11 has two copies. Both chromosomes have two copies of beta gene and each copy of chromosome 11 has only one gene for beta globin genes. So if both genes are present on both the chromosomes 11, the person is normal. If one beta gene is absent or affected, then there is beta thalassemia minor. In beta thalassemia major, both the genes are deleted. They do not make the beta globin chains. Here in this B part of the slide, the chains are, which are formed in thalassemia are alpha chains, some beta chains, gamma, delta chains, and two gamma, gamma G and gamma AG chains. That's why they form different types of tetramers. In hemoglobin A, both the tetramers are normal, two alpha and two beta. If two alpha are joined together with two delta, then hemoglobin A2 is formed. If two alpha chains in the absence of beta chains make the tetramers with gamma chains the hemoglobin F is there. They can make the tetramers of alpha chains with no beta chains at all but these tetramers they precipitate and cannot 
perform the function. Beta thalassemias can be in the form of beta thalassemia trait or beta thalassemia minor or it could be beta thalassemia major with severe anemia called Cooley's anemia. In beta thalassemia trait or beta thalassemia minor, it is seen in patients heterozygous to the defect. Since some beta chains are produced, they do not require any treatment and they are generally symptoms free and the patients can pass a normal life. Even up to the age of 70, some patients have been found having thalassemia trait with no symptoms or no complications seen or noted by the patients. One finding is there definitely the hemoglobin level is at the lower level of normal hemoglobin. So these patients having thalassemia trait or beta thalassemia minor patient, they pass normal life only having lower side of anemia but no symptoms and any sort of complication. The other type beta thalassemia major it is seen in the patients homozygous to the defect. Both genes are defective since no beta chains synthesis occur there is severe anemia but the manifestations of beta thalassemia major are not seen before the age of six months because hemoglobin F is there, which is replaced by adult hemoglobin after the age of six months or 12 months onward. So beta globin gene is not expressed until late in the fetal gestation the physical manifestation of beta thalassemia appear only several months after birth. Beta thalassemia major patients become severely anemic and due to ineffective erythropoiesis and due to hemolytic anemia, there is splenomegaly and other complications including abnormal bone marrow function. Treatment is regular transfusion of blood. The patients require regular transfusion, maybe monthly, twice a month or even in severe cases weekly. But these regular transfusions of blood, they have their own demerits. And the cumulative effect is iron overload. The condition is called hemocydrosis, which result in damage to skin, spleen, heart, kidneys, liver, and pancreas. When these vital organs are affected, definitely there is an early death. In there, the age is generally adolescence, but, but there is iron chelation therapy where chelating agents they are given intravenous or orally which bind with the iron and help their excretion. This availability of iron chelation therapy has improved morbidity and mortality. Nowadays in Pakistan this therapy is costly but is given to the thalassemic major patients and they can pass their life up to the age of 25 or 30 years while in developed countries because of advanced treatment facilities the upper age limit has reached to 40 to 45 years. Generally the these patients do not live beyond 45 years of age. Other, the best treatment is the bone marrow transplant. 
the stem cells are transplanted in the bone and they produce the normal erythropoiesis and patient can live longer and this treatment is available in pakistan and it is also successful here is the clinical presentation these children they have mongoloid features with stunted growth saddle nose protruded bellies dark complexion of skin and they suffer from severe hemolytic anemia so there could be associated jaundice there is definitely jaundice and hyperbilirubinemia in these children nowadays because of pandemic of coronavirus there is a shortage of donors for the blood to be given in these children and it has been requested for the donors to give blood donation to be given to these beta thalassemic major children for their survival alpha thalassemia these are the defects in which synthesis of alpha globin chain is decreased it is generally caused by deletional mutation there are several levels of alpha globin chain deficiencies either it could be a carrier or having thalassemic trait or having disease called hemoglobin h thalassemia or there is bart hemoglobin disease resulting in fetal death due to high drops this slide is showing the organization of alpha genes on chromosome number 16 here is the key if one gene out of four is absent the patient is silent carrier if two genes are affected in homozygous or in heterozygous they show mild clinical symptoms and they suffer from alpha thalassemic trait if three genes are absent then hemoglobin h disease is there and if four alpha chains are deleted hemoglobin bart causing the hydrops fetalis and intrauterine death the slide b is showing the chains formed in alpha thalassemia alpha chains beta chains gamma chains and delta chains so there could be adult hemoglobin and there could be hemoglobin h or hemoglobin bart before starting the diagnosis of thalassemia it is pertinent to mention that detailed description of thalassemias would be in your clinical classes only i can highlight some points in the diagnosis of thalassemia family history and clinical examination signs and symptoms there is anemia hemolytic crisis jaundice and splenomegaly laboratory findings low hemoglobin in cbc raised serum bilirubin in lfts and increased bilirubin excretion in urine the abnormalities are also found when we make the blood smears taken from the blood and bone marrow the definite diagnostic method is 
hemoglobin hemoglobin electrophoresis it is useful in almost all hemoglobinopathies and it has also been made mandatory before marriages in Pakistan to exclude beta thalassemia trait in individuals. If both the proposed individuals are having beta thalassemia trait, then they are advised not to marry with each other so that they may result because they can result into the birth of beta thalassemic major children. The technique is very simple. Though the modern techniques are available, giving you the accurate estimation of different types of hemoglobin. But this simple technique is there. We take the hemoglobin from the lysed hemoglobin, place them on the start. And since these are negatively charged, hemoglobin are hemoglobins are negatively charged molecules, they move towards the anode when current is passed. Hemoglobin A being the most negatively charged moves ahead, then hemoglobin S and hemoglobin C. So these three hemoglobinopathies, including normal hemoglobin, can be detected. So far as thalassemia especially the beta thalassemia the concern the hemoglobin a is again differentiated into hemoglobin f and hemoglobin a2 their quantitative estimation is taken and considered for the diagnosis of beta thalassemia major or beta thalassemia minor so this electrophoresis technique is simple but nowadays it is performed in the modern machines and both qualitative and quantitative estimations are made by these machines and we can diagnose definitely about the uh, we can we have may have the definite diagnosis of beta thalassemia alpha thalassemia and other hemoglobinopathies like hemoglobin s or c Here is a concept summarized map of hemoglobinopathies which may help you to remember and reproduce different types of hemoglobinopathies. This portion is showing the synthesis of structurally abnormal hemoglobins. Hemoglobin S, hemoglobin C disease and hemoglobin SC disease. This part is showing you the diseases of thalassemia where insufficient quantities of normal hemoglobin takes place. And in others, the met hemoglobinemia is there where iron is found in the ferric form. The main book from which this lecture has been prepared is Lipping Course Illustrated Reviews on Biochemistry. Thank you.